What's up guys? Welcome back. Part number 5 of my 24 scale hurricane build. And here she is. What a beauty she is too. Now, if you're, like, if you're into large scale warbirds, do yourself a favor, get this kit. It's amazing. The earlier version, the, the Battle Britain one, I've seen online for cheap as 55 bucks shipped with tax and everything. Um, this one's a later version, it's a little bit more expensive. But amazing kit. Um, we're almost together now. Um, from this on, way in, I guess if it goes bad, it's user error on me rather than the kit. But it, it yeah. I can't say enough great things about this. It's just a blast to work on and build, and um, we're almost at the paint stage. So there she is again, all buttoned up, and in this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the final assembly done, the gear, um, all the other little bits and sub-assemblies, radiator, that kind of stuff, ready. So next week when we come back, we can go ahead and start painting this guy, and it's gonna look really cool in those um, late Mark II C colors. So again, here she is, beautiful kit. It's kind of hard to fit on the camera now, but it's not super massive, but 24th scale, and really, really loving this one. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so welcome back everybody, and um, moving along nicely with this beautiful aircraft. And um, yeah, I'm tempted to buy some more of these. It's so, such a nice kit. So now we're going to really wrap up the final assembly here. So let's kind of talk about what we've got left to do, and then we'll kind of get stuck in. So the structures don't really flow very well. So we've done all these parts, but you've got to go back. Remember, we skipped parts 9 and 10, the stabilizers. No big deal at all. Just two parts for that side, two parts for that. Um, so basically four parts for each, for the right and the left. Um, no problem at all. So we've got stabilizers. We did all this, we've done a man 14, then we put the stabilizer and the rudder on, I've already put the rudder on. Um, these small parts, like the aerials and stuff, we're going to leave off, we're not going to do that right now. Um, but we can definitely work on the door here, and um, the gun sight, definitely needs to be done. We did all this page already, we did this page, we did this page, we've done all this, and we've done all this, and we've done that. So now we're skipping all the way to the end, 22, so we've got gear to do. Just no problem at all, just a few parts, well three parts plus the hub, um, we've got the rubber tires and then the radiator and the radiator housing um, we'll have to do, which, which is the main kind of bulk. Then moving on we'll put the radiator on and um, this guy too, again we'll leave all the gear off until we're finished painting this guy and same with the exhaust, um, we can do the prop and um, we'll leave the, we can make the exhaust and we'll leave them off and once the whole thing's painted we'll glue it on the very end. Um, and then finally we're not going to put the prop on, but we'll do the prop separately. Um, we can go ahead and do the canopy and mask it up. And by which time, we'll be ready to go. I mean, ready for priming and paint next week. So just a few little jobs to do here and there, take care of. I think the main thing here is just really that few parts to painting and taking care of the um, the radiator here and this part and the gear, obviously. So cool. So that's kind of running through real quick what we've got ahead of us. This part, um, as always, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the parts off the sprues, getting it cleaned up, and I'll be right back. All right, so painted pretty much everything per the instructions, and we've made a lot of progress here. So most of it's silver. This guy was painted LP19, the gun metal we've been using on this build. I quite like how that's looking. That's going to go inside this guy, which is painted with the usual um, interior green color we've been using as well. That'll just go in there. See, I did a little arrow and a sharpie so which side's forward. It's a little tip. Um, that's done. Um, dark iron, which is XF84. These guys, um, not quite so sure about these. I might do something else. We'll see. Um, if you need some kind of weathering or something, probably. And the gear, again, LP11. I do like the way LP11 looks the silver looks over the mr surfacer black as a primer it just it just looks really nice the black behind it i really like this color so it's not too shiny just a normal kind of silvery color um same color for the wheels for the hubs um so paint all these parts up also painted the, the prop mr surfacer 1500 black again i just love the tone on this now this middle part is supposed to be silver but guess what? When you put a spinner on it, you're not going to see it. So there's no point painting that silver. So still only got to paint the tips yellow. Um, but do like the finish of this Mr. Surface of 1500. You can see there, it does look pretty nice. Um, yeah, so that's a prop. Very big. You can see the size of my hand. And of course, the aircraft itself. So let me move this out of the way. So I've got more space to bring her in. And um, 
you see here I've put on the um, these panels just with PVA glues they can peel right off that not damaged paint work no problem at all both on the side and the side the reason I've added them is purely just paint wise when we paint we paint it is it masks and protects the engine um, and then once we're done we just take them off and we can leave it open so just put them on paint painting purposes and if I show you what I've done in here too this was a little fiddly so these guys go in the side one on each side this pipe kind of kind of threads through it on each side and then there's a pipe that goes from here into there which is really tricky so I have to chop the end off the tab to kind of get the fit and then the slots right in so that's the pipes and a little bit of detail we added to the underside all this will get painted silver eventually um, and added this guy too um, we took care of the seam lines and added this guy and that's kind of where we're at so as a quick update so being very busy working with sub assemblies um, so let this dry for a few more minutes and then I can start putting some of this stuff together and um, we're really almost assembly wise we're pretty much almost done so let me go ahead and finish this and I'll be right back all right, so I just went through and um, filmed this segment and forgot to hit record on the audio. So <laughs> I've gone through it again. Luckily, I, I can remember what I did here. So working the sub assemblies and really good shape. So we've got the gear here. So painted with the LP11, the silver for the inside and the outside is painted with the body color, um, the lower fuselage. We're using medium C gray, Hataka Laka paint, C141. And it's a good old BS381. So Hataka paints will be used on this guy. Um, so we'll talk about it more next week when we actually get the painting of it. But painted the um, the outside, the fuselage color, now did the um, dark dirt wash, panel line wash. Again, we're gonna get into this next week um, in subsequent videos when we talk about weathering and stuff. It's gonna be all the same as the main aircraft itself. Um, for, the, for the actual gear, silver parts itself, um, as we talked about with the engine, used uh, Aptalon Black nice thin kind of wash with enamel thinners just to pick out the detail and then the hubs there and finally the tread on the tires so i want i think about using some kind of pigment thing and i realized i had this guy which is ak dust and dirt deposits which is ak4062 now this separates and see how that's basically your, that's basically your pigment and that's like a wash so you give it gives us a really, really, really good wash or a stir to get this thing going. Probably a stir, I think. Um, get in there with a metal, you know, stirring stick and and, and get that thing mixed up. Um, then I applied it on. It was a little too thick for my liking, so I added some enamel thinner with a brush and just dialed it back. Just you know, wiped it off. And then finally, with a cotton bud or a Q-tip, just wiped away all the excess and I'm left with this. So I really liking these rubber tires. Um, tip with these guys. These are really hard to put on. It's like solid rubber to get the actual hub inside it. So what I did was heat up some water, um, not quite boiling, but some really hot water, threw these rubber parts into the water uh, for about two minutes, took them out, shook off all the water, and then it made them a little bit more soft and malleable. Then I could actually get, actually get these um, hubs in there. Without that, I just couldn't, it was just too too hot, tight of a fit to get in there. So the top tip with those ones, really liking how these are turning out. Um, again, the gear's done. And one nice thing about these warbirds, it's not like modern jets where there's a million gear doors and that kind of stuff. Um, Here's a little wheel. Again, you have to paint these parts separately and then sandwich it in and then glue it together. Um, it spins around and stuff. So quite nice rubber tires. I used to be a fan of resin, but lately I really like how the rubber ones are and it just give a nice clean finish as well. So gear done. The cockpit side door is done. Um, painted the usual in turn eight. What were we using? The H312. And just a brown wash to pick out some of the detail. This is photo etch. Um, this little thing here for your documents or whatever it is um, came out really well pretty really happy with that so I'm actually going to PVA glue this onto the side of the aircraft for painting and then when we're done I'm going to peel it off and have it in the open position so that guy's done propeller we did the propeller um, looking really good and uh, my scheme I'm doing should be RF sky the nose cone the spinner so um, which is XF21 a little bit too dark for my liking, so I added a couple of drops of white just to lighten it off a little bit. Just needs a little bit of touch-up work, paint work here. Um, so I did that, um, painted the tips yellow, no problem at all, and added a few little chips down here with my new favorite um, dry brushing, which is Citadel Dry Necron Compound. Necron Compound. And if you see this, it's like solid goo. So it's for dry brushing which actually works really good i don't like i like it because it's not too bright in your face and like it's like doesn't you know it's solid it kind of looks like it's gone off but that's how it's supposed to be so basically um using you know the old packing foams just dipped it in um 
ex wipe the excess off and just very lightly add a, oh, very lightly add a few chips down the blades. So that's that one done. I do want to add a quick matte coat just to protect it, to seal it all in. Um, and then at the very end, that will just slot right on. Um, no problem at all. Exhaust. We paint, as you know, we painted them um, iron. And I came back again with the same Necron compound and at this time dry brushed it. So dry brushed it on and I really like this effect. It works really good and hopefully the camera picks it up. But from the plain kind of iron color to this, it just you know, really makes it pop and look fantastic, I think. So I'm really happy with that. So these guys are done. Um, and then finally, the actual aircraft, the aircraft itself. So all I've done, I don't think I mentioned this, but I did the radiator and um, glued it on and one top tip, I think it'd be easier to, before you glue it on, mask the back part up here, because the radiator itself, and then glue it on, because now I have to try to mask it um, for when we paint prime and paint the underside, so it's going to be a lot tricky. The front one's okay, because it's, you know, it's like a normal intake, so I can just use a bit of packing foam and just shove it in there, and we're going to be good to go. But just on this back one, I'd recommend you just mask that before you stick it on, it'd be a little bit easier, because now I have to kind of work around these side walls and stuff. Um, but that guy's on. Um... Also took care of some of these seams, um, sanded these down, the wing root, and um, back here, sanded, you know, sanded these down. Probably need a little bit of rescribing, it's a little bit rivet detail going on there too, but overall really happy how this is turning out. So we've been working a ton of stuff, it's nice because now we don't have to worry about this later on in the build. It's all done, put it to the side somewhere safe, and then we just could concentrate on painting. And once it's painted and decaled and weathered, we just slot all this stuff on with super glue and we're finished. So really like, like the building sub assemblies and getting this stuff, stuff done early on so you're not having to bog down at the end of the build. So all we've got left now really to do today is the canopy and mask it up with the Montex mask set. So I'm gonna do the canopy, mask it up, and then um, we'll be ready for next week for priming and painting. Alrighty, so I've got the Montex mask set, and um, here it is. It's actually not that more, more expensive to get a full mask set than it's just for the canopy mask. Um, so we'll talk more, a lot more about this next week when we get into painting, but the canopy mask here um, has the inside inside and the outside. I masked the outside already, which I'll show you in a minute. And it has some um, copper mask too for, for the, um, the lights on the wings, which is kind of handy. Um, I'm hoping the inside is the same size, because then when I get my mark one kit i can just save this and use these for that that one as well which would be nice um so gives the layout here i mean you see you got the roundels and stuff which again we'll get into next week um you can see they're all, all cut out and uh, makes things a lot easier when we paint on the markings rather than um using decals so let me kind of put this to the side and bring her in so what we've we done so we master canopy up put it on and as always i always struggle with like gun sights and like huds and stuff this thing slipped i knocked it and um it knocked the the lens of the gun sight it fell right inside the aircraft so i lost it so i just end up glued it on i take care of it later maybe a little acetate i'll fix it later on in the build but in the meantime yeah pva glue um a little bit much podge just glued this back canopy on so it doesn't fall off when we paint it so that's all masked on no problem at all it's a nice mask set Hopefully there's no bleed. I never used Montex before, but um, so that's masked up. And um, we also painted the the lights on the wings. Let me zoom out a little bit here. The lights on the wings. Um, we painted them the interior color, the green, and then um, I applied the the basically the clear parts. One side was like clear blue. One part was clear red. Um, glue painted those. Glued those in, um, and then the actual clear parts themselves. I uh, masked up obviously before I glued these in place. I glued these in place. Once these peeled off at the end, you'll see exactly what's inside there and I'll get a better idea. So masked up lights, they're all on. Um, also this little part here on top of the canopy, added that on. Looks like, I think it might be a mirror. It has a clear part that goes in, so I left that clear part off. And um, that's it, we're finally ready for paint. Everything's attached, masked up, and we're ready to hit with primer next week. So really enjoying this one. Um, again, next week we'll start with primer and getting painting or the camouflage and we'll get rounds of like you know painting all the, all the markings all the round doors and that kind of stuff so cool it's a lot covered in this one again thank you for watching as always and i'll see you next week bye bye